Hi everybody. No, you're not seeing spots. What I have in front of me here is a piece of heavy black cardstock. And I've pushed some spackling compound I found in the garage through a stencil. And it creates a kind of um, little relief off the top of the surface of the paper. The black allows you to see where that relief is. And so I pushed it through, and in a couple of days, uh, after it dries, we are having very stormy weather here right now, it should be dry, and then I can do a rubbing off of it. Today, however, as I was drawing a blank, I did get another idea. <laughs> And I took a piece of copy paper, which is thin, and I took one of my favorite stencils and I took some blue painter tape and put it on the, the uh, paper and decided to flip it over this way and take some kitty color crayons. I think I want to use a blue, I'm not sure nice pink or blue or something. Let me see. And I wanted to see if I could do a rubbing in reverse. Ooh, that's working. Don't know if you can see that yet. I'll bring that. There we go. A rubbing in reverse. I probably should have used a darker color for the video, but that's working really good. Look at that. Ooh, that's so pretty. Now she recommended a brand name wax, beeswax crayon but she also said that you can do the rubbing with a red wax candle if you want. It didn't matter. And she recommended rice paper. Well, rice paper's not in my budget, thank you. So I come up with things that people can afford to do or can find most commonly around the household. I'm going to use a little darker color because I don't know how well this is showing up. So I think I'll use a red. Red and pink kind of go together. Oh, there you go. You can see that a lot better. Now, rubbings have been done for hundreds of years, and some people travel uh, far and wide to find things to literally rub that are old and ancient. Sometimes they'll go out and they'll do a huge rubbing of one of those lids in the street that says sewer <laughs> on it or water on it. In Europe, they've got some beautiful places to do rubbings. So this is an ancient art. So I'm, of course, doing this with an ordinary stencil. So funny, I have a hard time with the printmaking. Um, 
wrapping my brain around understanding it. And I watch so many videos on it. Once in a while, I'll pull some really good prints and I save them. But when she did this one, because she was a jelly print lady, I said, this is something I could do. It's simple. I don't have to think. <laughs> well, that turns out pretty good. I might follow up with some purple here, too. Though this does look kind of purpley to me. Now, there's lots of things you could do, and I, I really believe in this. By the way, when you rub, please rub on the side of the crayon, not on the tip. Otherwise, you'll fill in the places you don't want filled in. I love the symmetry of these stencils because they I think you remember this I just made a little video a couple of days ago about the spots in front of your eyes just as a review this is done with spackling compound pushed through a stencil onto very heavy black cardstock. And this way I can see it creates a relief and I can see the surface versus the um, spackling compound. If it was white on white, it would be hard to do. Now, I just did this because I wanted to do a rubbing off of it and I'm going to show you the results of the first rubbing. Well, it's not exactly pulling out the different spots, but it's created a kind of interesting um, relief that I could use for possible background. I did it by laying the copy paper on the top of the um, we call this a print card, and I rubbed it with the side of a Crayola. This is an amazing company. Hell or high water, they've always got new products and new ideas. I just really like them. Anyway, I did, I rubbed that alongside, and um, it's okay, and that's the best I could do with that. So I thought I would try a piece of regular tissue paper. All right. And see if I get a different or a better result. Also, another thing I noticed was that the spackling compound actually chipped off. Mm -mm -mm. And I'm wondering if I'm doing this on the shiny side. Yes, I am. Let me pull it here, because I don't know what that shiny is, if it's wax itself or what it is. But I noticed in the light it's shiny on one side and not shiny on the other. So let's see if I get better results here. I do. All right, so I'm going to just see what this does, if it does anything. It's so funny, the lady that did this demo did it so flawlessly and it all came out just perfect. And she was using all the most expensive um, spackling you could buy for arts and crafts. 
which I have bought in the past too. But if this dries out, if spackling compound dries out in any way, um, it will crumble on you. So I use ordinary household spackle because when I put in spackle for arts and crafts in Amazon, it gave me ordinary <laughs> household spackle for your walls. And I said, okay, yeah, that's what I suspected, so that's what I did. Now when you get the uh, spackle pushed through the stencil, you want to be sure to put it in some soapy water and let it soak. Otherwise, you will ruin your stencil. So here we go. We're just rubbing to see where it will rub. The other thing she used was beeswax candles. I mean, beeswax uh, crayons. And um, I could see that that was going to be a cha-ching, cha-ching, too. But she did say you could do it with ordinary Crayolas. So here I am <laughs> trying to do the experiments that the print lady talked about. And um, I don't make it look as good as her. I find that true. Of, uh, sometimes I do a demo. I'll see a demo. I'll get all excited about it. And it doesn't come out the way they say it's going to. Of course, they're pushing some products. And um, But it's okay, because some of them do turn out awesome. And I'm not real impressed with this either. But I'm going to see what tissue paper rubbing does on the back of other surfaces. I put it on, um, you know, white backing or something. I'll have to see. I'll just keep rub-a-dubbing here. So, things I find that don't work all that they're cracked up to be. All right. And it's so funny because I'm so wanting to do printmaking and <laughs> I just am having a hard time getting the hang of it. First of all, one thing I noticed, I did get someone who gave me a recipe. There is one place where you're supposed to let the paint dry, which I didn't know. And then I did start getting some good prints when I went through the drawing process. But I didn't even know there was a drawing process because people were pulling the prints up as soon as they laid the paint down and da-da-da-da-da, and this is how we do it. And I think they speed through their videos because they're afraid that you're going to shut off their video, which you might. There are times that on my dashboard in YouTube, it says, oh, you've fallen. People aren't watching you. Well, I don't care. I'm just doing this for free. But there's some people that are serious, want to make a living off YouTube. And that's fine. But I'm just here to share what I know, and if you want to learn from me, you can. Anyway, this is... About all of that I want to do. I'm going to slip this out from behind. Look at it crumble. Ugh. Okay. Wow. Set it down. Now I'm going to take some... I'll take a complimentary color cardstock, which is yellow, because it's complementary to blue and put it behind there and say, well, does that do a whole lot for me? It actually almost turned it green. Oh well, there you have it. This is not one that wows me either. 
Well, in, it's continuing to snow outside. I'm just delighted that I still have my electricity. The snow is really thick out there. One, it only takes one limb full of snow to hit a power line, and we're done for for quite a few hours. So you have a good day, and I'll be talking to you later. Thank you for dropping by my studio.